If you enjoy this video, do subscribe by pressing this button below. You'll be the first to be informed of any posting that I make. Shalom. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for anointing us. Thank you for your presence, for Hallelujah. healing. Amen. We give you all the all glory. the glory and all the liberty to reign freely in our lives. Father, as we come and share your word, you have spoken to me and my wife that this is an urgent message to warn and to prepare your people that persecution is near. So, Father, we thank you for this message for today and we ask that Spirit of God come, come and saturate all the various brothers and sisters that listen to this uh, message, that Amen. their heart will be enlightened, the eyes of the understanding will be enlightened. So come, Holy Spirit, come, come and teach us your way. In Yeshua's name, and everyone says, Amen. 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 Well, the reason why we think this is important because uh, the signs around us is pointing very, the very soon return of our Lord Yeshua. And henceforth, uh, we feel that many churches do not prepare their people uh, for the persecution to come. And in fact, there is so many verses in the Bible that talks about the tribulation and also guide us how we can overcome and be overcomers. So today in this uh, short hour or so, uh, I'm going to bring you scriptures and I'm going to uh, lift up your spirit that uh, to know that to be prepared is so much better than not to be prepared. And there is this good news, all right? In this uh, flyer that I've shown you just now, we, we I quoted Matthew 24, 14. And the good news is that despite the gloom and doom and this, beside the fact that tribulation is right at our doorstep, even in our nation, there is good news that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations and then, the end comes. Now, the end comes is not the end of everything. The end comes means that uh, Yeshua will return. We now do not just only preach the gospel of salvation, which is a good thing to, to, to bring in people into the kingdom. But Yeshua has come to the world besides giving us salvation, reconciling us back to our Father. His main message is to declare the kingdom of God. And with the kingdom of God, the king will return to rule and to reign. Amen. His first coming is as a gentle sacrificial lamb. Where he shed his precious blood to redeem all of His return is coming in as the king of kings and the lord of lords and to ju judge the world and to give rewards for those who have endured and overcome. So here, that's the good news, all right? And this good news is not just only uh, dependent on us to bring the gospel to the nations as commanded by Yeshua in Matthew uh, 28. But this final gospel, uh, you will read the book of Revelation, uh, you will notice that in Revelation 14, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindreds and tongues and people. Now I'm using the Discovery Bible uh, app uh, that uh, Pastor Edmund Chan has, uh, you know, uh, basically yeah, say that this is a very good uh, Bible app to study the word of God. And I check out the word on nations, all right? I check out the word on kindred. Kindred is also means tribes. Some uh, translations say tribes and also tongues and people. Now, this is what I discovered. Now, nations in the context of the word of God is not the nations that we think about, like Singapore as a nation. It is actually referring to the non-Jews. All right. So when you notice that this verse, that the angels will preach the everlasting gospel First of all, to all the non-Jewish people, the Golim, the Gentiles, and those who do not know the Lord. Now, kindred or the tribes uh, means a common uh, ancestor. 
<laughs> What's the common ancestor that if you want to trace it all the way back, it will be back to Noah. <laughs> all right. And, back to Adam. and then finally back to Adam, of course. Um, and that is kindred or uh, the uh, uh, what you call tribes. Now, tongues is actually uh, referred to in the days of Acts chapter 2, where it is uh, the Holy Spirit inspired language. All right, those who speak in tongues and people. Now, people are referring to the people of God, which specifically people here refers to the Jewish people, not just ordinary people. So you see the order of this. First, the message is given to all the Gentiles, all right, to all the various people of the, of the, of the same uh, kindred spirit. And then uh, those uh, going down the line will be last is also to those who know Yeshua, uh, the Jewish people. And this uh, also actually mentioned in Revelation 13, where the Antichrist that I spoke on last Shabbat is also given the power on this four group of people, but then they reverse the order. All right, you will notice that in uh, Revelation 13, it talks first about the people who give them the power are those, uh, you know, uh, the people, then the tongue and the tribe, and then the nations. All right, so here, um, with that, let's move on quickly. Persecution will come before Yeshua's return. All right, so here, uh, yes, I, and I think uh, Prophet Robert, uh, one of our spiritual uh, mentors, uh, mentioned in many, many teaching sessions that he says that the um, uh, tribulation has already started. Uh, the path uh, of Satan. The, the, yeah. It has already started in many places. You beginning can see. of sorrows, yeah. according to Matthew 24. That's right. The beginning of sorrow has started. And uh, his uh, understanding from the word of God is that Yeshua will return very, very soon. And uh, he thinks that it will be in a lifetime. All right. So here, uh, according specifically to... Specifically, at the end of the Gentile will be 2027, if you, if you attended his class. So according to Matthew 24, 7 to 9, for nation will rise against nation, all right, um, and kingdoms against kingdoms. So here, nation is referring to uh, you know the non-Jewish nation, which is all the nations in the world except for Israel. They will rise up against one another, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famine, pestilence, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. We are getting to see increasingly more of such natural uh, disasters. And all these are the beginning of sorrow. Uh, they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. So the ultimate uh, persecution is that uh, you will be uh, killed and will be hated by all nations. For what reason? For my name's sake. So here, when we talk about persecution, uh, we can experience, uh, you know, persecution for, by our own foolish act, right? Like, like for example, you uh, jaywalk, you know, on the street, and uh, all of a sudden, a car come and knock you. <laughs> and but that's for your own foolishness. But this persecution specifically refers that when you stand up for Yeshua's name, and surely when you stand up for Yeshua's name you will face the wrath of the dragon. And henceforth, this tribulation is actually refers to the wrath of the dragon. And here, it is not by coincidence uh, that our uh, founder of the church that both of us serve in, uh, City Missions Church, our founder, uh, pastor, senior pastor, and now uh, we have... Uh, uh, confer him the recognition of uh, apostleship and he actually was stirred up by the spirit of God to encourage nations to pray together and this uh, global prayer movement uh, was started last year and when you look at Luke 21 verse 36 when you watch and therefore pray always that you will be counted worthy to do what? to escape all these things they will come to pass. So here, one way that uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, be blessed in a way that uh, we do not go through the persecution, we will be in Goshen, for example, you will be protected, uh, you will not need to face death, uh, you just to watch and pray. Not only mm -hmm. just pray, but to be prayfully, to be watchfully 
praying to the uh, things that uh, the Lord shows you. Amen. So here, Luke 21, uh, again, I want to repeat in verse 36. He said, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. And all these things that will come to pass will come because it is in the word of God. And to stand before the Son of Man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage all of us, for all of you who wants to be in kosher, to be protected, uh, you need to accelerate and intensify your prayer to watch and to pray. All right, so what does scripture tell us about uh, the persecution that is coming? All right, so here in Matthew 5, particularly in verse 10 in the, um, this uh, Sermon of the Mount, Yeshua basically say, you are blessed. <laughs> so here it is contrary to what the world thinks that when you are persecuted, you are cursed. All right, so Yeshua say, you are blessed, uh, Blessed are those who are persecuted. Now, persecuted not because we are persecuted for anything, but because of righteousness. For oh, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All right. Now, he did not say you are be persecuted because you go and preach the gospel. All right. I mean, of course, you will be persecuted in that sense. But in this particular context, he said you are persecuted because of righteousness. Uh, this is very important. I think uh, when we study the word of God, we need to be very mindful of the word itself. He did not say you are persecuted because you go to the nation uh, to preach the gospel. He says you'll be persecuted for righteousness. And of course, when you go and to preach the gospel of the kingdom, you're preaching the righteous kingdom that is coming. And that is part of righteousness. But here especially refers to you are persecuted because you stand for what you believe that is right. All right. So here, the first example of murder was uh, in, um, in Genesis. Uh, Cain killed Abel. Cain is, uh, was the firstborn. Was the firstborn of uh, Adam and Eve. And uh, Cain was a farmer. Abel was a, a tenderer of uh, livestock. And uh, Abel's... Um, Offer to the Lord was received, and yet uh, Cain's offer was rejected. And because of that, uh, God actually blessed Abel. I blessed him with uh, bountiful, uh, you know, uh, uh, livestock. And because of that, uh, Cain became envious. And um, Abel did what was right in the eyes of God because he understood that he gives from the best of his flock. Or else Cain just probably just gave whatever that comes out from the crown. And uh, he did what was right. And because he did what was right, Abel. He, and, he, 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 he basically invited uh, uh, envy from his older brother. And henceforth, he was killed. So here again, because what you stood for in terms of what you understand as being right, you will expect to face persecution. And there are many examples in the world, and uh, later on in this sharing, I will point out some to you, that the formula to, for persecution is always when you stand up for what is right, the masses who are against you will be the unrighteous, and you will be persecuted, and at times you'll be thrown into prison, and worst of all, you may be tortured, and you may be killed too. So what does uh, righteousness uh, meant in scripture. Now, the word righteousness is so important that when I make a concordance uh, check, uh, briefly it appears in Bible 213 times. All right, so the word righteous and righteousness is key uh, to God's heart. So uh, here we understand that Noah was found righteous. All right, Noah was asked by the Lord when he was uh, 500 years, uh, he gave uh, he and the wife give birth to uh, the children, uh, which is uh, basically Jasper, um, uh, 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 Shem, and Ham. And, um, you know, and God told him to uh, go and prepare an ark because God told him that destruction will come. And Noah believed. All right. So here the word says, come into the ark and you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. And because uh, Noah 
believe in God, he began to build the ark. And Abraham too. Abraham believed and he was deemed righteous. So righteousness is always, uh, you know, uh, attached to the faith, to what you believe. All right, verse 5. Then he brought him outside and said, look now towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord and God accounted Abraham for righteousness. So here, righteousness is to believe in what God says and also not just believe, but to take action to take action and to do it and to resist uh, evil, to resist unrighteous things. So the scripture has uh, was fulfilled and Abraham believed God and he was credited to him as righteousness in uh, James 2, verse 23 too. So as I mentioned earlier, righteousness is imputed by faith, which is your belief. All right, so by faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. So fear, there are two types of fear. There is a holy fear and also the fear of man. But because Noah feared of God and he believed in what God said, there will be uh, destruction coming and uh, to save his family. So by faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith, Hebrew 11, 7. And then further down uh, in the New Testament, in Matthew 5, 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. All right, so here, again, I want to stress, for doing what is right, for believing what is right, and to stay firm on your belief, you will attract persecution. And God says, Persevere, because great will be your reward. Amen. Right. So here, on the next couple of slides, I want to share with you some of the ways according to Scripture on how to prepare Amen. for the impending tribulation or persecution. But first of all, let's go back to Matthew 5, particularly 10 and 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Right? Not other things, but for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Then verse 12 says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now here, Yeshua says very contrary to the world. When in the world, we, when we persecuted, we say, oh no, that is so bad. I want to get out of it as fast as I can by aligning my uh, faith to those who are persecuting me and therefore I will escape, escape the persecution. But Yeshua said, when you are persecuted for my sake, you should rejoice because you are counted to be blessed because those who are actually going through martyrdom are actually the blessed ones because they will come and rule and reign with Yeshua. Amen. So that's why Yeshua says, when they revile, revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake, he says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad Amen. because you can ensure that you will be getting great reward right in heaven. So I want to declare and I want to pronounce into your very spirit being that you will not be fearful of persecution. And in fact, when you are persecuted for his name's sake, you should be exceedingly glad and you should rejoice because you are come worthy to stand up for what is right and stand up for what is the truth. So henceforth, receive it. And I speak into your spirit being that you will rejoice, be exceedingly glad. So let's move on. <laughs> let's rejoice. All right. So the number one thing that uh, we can prepare ourselves is to condition our spirit to fear 
not. So I speak unto your spirit, Dean. Fear not. All right. For God did not give you a spirit of fear, but what? But of power. Love. And of love. Sound mind. And of a sound mind, sound that mind. you can Very be important. able to discern between the truth and the half truth. So okay, second nice. Timothy 1 7. So I declare again, receive this word. Be have this word be in your spirit, be meditate on it. And as you meditate on it, you will be fearless because you say, God has not given me a spirit of fear. So when I have that fear, it's not from God. Amen. But he has given me the power to overcome and to love those even who persecute me and to give me a sound mind that I will not be distracted, I will not be waylaid, I will be keeping the path straight and I'll be able to discern between the truth and the half-truth, oh, the lies. All right? So here, this is very important that we fear not. Now, what did Jesus or Yeshua say about fear of men? Right? Because all the time, we are so fearful of men, but we do not fear an awesome God. So we need to recondition our mind, not to fear men. Now, what did Yeshua say about fear of men? In Revelation 2.10, he says, do not fear. All right, I speak to you, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. You see, the reward is waiting for you. For you that will be thrown into prison, uh, because that is a testing period. And when you come out tested, refined by fire, and then there will be crown of life. So here, Wait, imagine you. yourself, the crown of life is waiting for you when you remain faithful unto death. All right, so here, this is something what Yeshua said, fear not, because you're going to suffer. But when you suffer, be exceedingly glad and rejoice because your reward will be great. Amen. Amen. But then, do not fear men, fear God. I want to bring you to the story of Joseph. All right, Joseph, company. So all of us want to be like Joseph. Amen. He rather faced persecution and ended himself in prison than to sin against God because Joseph company fear God and doesn't fear men. All right, taking from Genesis 39, verse 8. But he refused and said to his master wife, now this Pontiphar's wife, all right, the Egyptian women are very sensual in the dressing. And the Bible recorded that Pontiphar's wife, the name not mentioned at all because she's not worthy to be mentioned, Pontiphar's wife looked upon Joseph with his handsome body and his handsome demeanor. He wanted to seduce him. She wanted to seduce him to be in bed with her. And so she takes all kinds of uh, you know, scheme. And finally, she caught Joseph by himself and with her alone. And here this the story goes. Look, this is what Joseph told her. She, she says, Joseph, come and uh, sleep with me. But Joseph replied and told her this. Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house and he has committed all that he has to my hand. Yes, Boniface, because his household was blessed and he recognized the blessing comes from uh, Joseph and henceforth he put Joseph as his, um, number you know, num not number two necessary, but as his uh, in control of his whole household. All right. There is no one greater in this house than I. That's what Joseph said. Nor has he kept back anything from me, but you, so Pontiphar's wife, because you are his wife. How can I do this great wickedness? And listen to this, sin against God. Now, Joseph knew that when the commandment of God said, you cannot sleep with the wife of your neighbor, you should not cover your neighbor's wife. <laughs> That's one of the commandments. And Joseph understood that. So he said, how could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Therefore, I'm more fearful of an awesome God that has given me the commandment not to be covetous of my neighbor's wife. Therefore, I say no to you. And Joseph fled. And when he fled, the Pontiphar's wife came and accused him. 
and Joseph paid for this righteousness and he ended up in prison. So here, this is a great uh, example to all of us. We shall not be uh, seduced by the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the bread of life. So henceforth, when you could not uh, you know, overcome mm. the temptation, the one way you can do is to flee from it. <laughs> do not go and sit there, you know, like in the Psalms, imagine. Do not go and stand and then uh, 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 to walk and then stand and then to sit and then you get yourself into deeper walk, problems. Stand, yeah. All right. So here, another example that I want to bring to you that uh, Daniel's three friends, all right, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Here say, I make the bed and then... And then okay, <laughs> <I'm not laughs> All right, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Answer and say to the king, Oh, Nicobanezer, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Now, the background of this verse, taken from Daniel 3, 16 to 18, was that um, the um, people in power in the days of uh, Nicobanezer want to scheme against the Jewish uh, 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 prophet Daniel and his friends, knowing that uh, they will not uh, bow down to worship idols. So they instituted uh, you know, the statue of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, and when you meet up with the statue, you need to bow down. Now, the three friends refused to bow down, and henceforth, they were brought to the king. And um, they say, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter, because Nebuchadnezzar said, bow down, and then you will be spared. You will not be uh, killed. But then the three friends says, Nebuchadnezzar, there is no need for us to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, even though God will not, uh, does not deliver them, you see how bold these three friends are. Let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods nor will Amen. we worship the gold image which you have set up. I proclaim and I decree into your spirit right now that you will be like the three friends. That when persecution comes in the point of being uh, threatened with your life, you will say, O oh, king, that we do not serve your God, we do not serve the untruth, nor we worship the gold image which you have set up. Because our God can deliver us. And even though he does not deliver me, I will still speak the truth. Amen? So here... I will not bow down. And here, the, there were and the fourth person in the furnace, which uh, we recognize it as the uh, yes, Yeshua. Sure. And none of the three friends were even hurt at all. Yeah. So this is amazing. So I speak into your spirit. Understand that all this story that is in the Bible is for our benefit. All right, the story of uh, Daniel's three friends, you know, uh, the story of various people get delivered is for us to encourage us that despite persecution, help will come yeah. from the Spirit of God and from God Himself, of course. So now uh, we spoke on the first preparation is to not to be fearful of men, but to fear God. Uh, the second preparation that uh, for persecution is uh, to build yourself up uh, in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. That's according to Jude 20. All right. So here we need to build ourselves up by uh, praying in the Holy Spirit. So praying in tongues, uh, edifying ourselves, to strengthen our faith. Now, for those of you who um, may not uh, accept uh, the notion of praying in tongue, I want to tell you that praying in tongue is one of the gifts, or uh, the night gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I usually, in the past, I don't believe it, but when I experience the um, empowerment of the baptism by the Spirit of God, I begin to speak in tongue. And speaking in tongue has a, a very uh, internal uh, strengthening of your resolve, right? especially when you are faced with persecution, and when you begin to speak fear. in unknown tongue, your fear is reduced and goes off. Yeah. Right? So I want to encourage you, uh, preparation number two is to continually um, boost up your faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. And so then I want the to, peace will come. So I want to encourage those of you who have not encountered this glorious gift of speaking in tongue. All you need to do is that God, Holy Spirit, I receive you. I receive you by faith. 
And then straight away, open up your mouth. Don't close it. Open your mouth and then whatever thing that come up in your, in your tongues, just let it go. Let it flow. Let it flow from your belly, you know. Oh, your belly come living waters and just say, Koramaka Shanda, Shukurupu Koramakata. When I speak this, I do not think. It just comes out. And do not be a shy, do not be shameful of what you speak. Because my tongue and your tongue are different. It is a special enablement by the Spirit of God. And therefore, you should not feel sh uh, shame because when you do that, it uh, basically um, grieves the Spirit of God and your tongue will cease. All right? So therefore, just open your mouth and say, Holy Spirit, I receive you. I receive your gift. And so come enable me and I release the Spirit of God through speaking in tongues. Holapakushata. You see, this is a demonstration of speaking in tongue. Amen. All right, so here, I believe that with the, and with the increase in darkness, all right, in Isaiah 60, right, particularly in verse 2, when the increase in darkness come, the power of God will be demonstrated in greater measures. I believe that we are returning back to the days of the church in Acts, where the Spirit of God is going to move in unmeasurable power, that even the shadow of Peter the fall on the sick, the sick will recover. So when darkness encroaches, God is going to come out with a banner of his victory, and the power of God on high will come upon every one of us, and we will be empowered, and we will be called out and to change the, 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 the darkness and bring light into the darkness. All right, so here, receive the power of the Spirit of God. So here, the church was birthed in power, and I believe the church, the glorious church of Yeshua, the holy and pure church of Yeshua will return in power. Amen. And here, so the first one was fear not, and second one is to speak in tongue. And the third uh, preparation is to meditate on his word. All right, so here in Psalm 91, verse 4, uh, he shall cover you with feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. And then it goes on and say, a thousand may fall on your side, ten thousand on the right, but no harm will come unto you. Hallelujah. So last uh, Shabbat, we uh, encourage you to uh, memorize Psalm 91. And uh, we have also sent you the uh, uh, little, uh, uh, what do you call uh, memory, uh, card. memory card, laminated memory card for those who ask for it. Now, for we do have still some left. And uh, if you would like to receive it, uh, just um, message me privately. Uh, give me, me your name and your address and I will mail it to you. There are two versions. One is in Chinese and one is in English. Uh, we don't have many left behind, but when you message me, I will have it mailed to you. All right. So have this uh, powerful verse, uh, Psalm 91, commit to your memory. And so especially when you are faced with uh, fear or you're faced with persecution, you just recite Psalm 91 uh, for those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, right? Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. And then you declare, all right? Uh, the God is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Amen. All right, so here you memorize it, commit to memory and... Uh, you know, it will come and strengthen your faith. So not just only Psalm 91, they're saying meditate on his word. There are many words there. Uh, you need healing, meditate on the healing word. You will need protection, meditate on the word of protection. And the Bible is for us, is for us to protect us. And henceforth, mm -hmm. now there is still the possibility of reading the word in a public space <laughs> uh, to commit the verses as many as you can and memorize it uh, into your spirit being. All right, here, in uh, 2015, and I believe this is going to come in increasing manner, um, the United Nations Human Rights Chief on uh, Tuesday condemned the mass behaving of the uh, Egyptian Christians, all right, the Coptic Christians in Libya. And that was in February 2015. The world cried out. At that time when I saw this, my only prayer for these people that's going to be uh, beheaded, my only prayer for them is, Lord, Give them the spirit of bonus. I pray that they will not deny, deny you and they love not their life unto death. And the glorious welcoming 
ceremony and party is waiting for them to receive their spirit and they will receive the crown of righteousness. So that was my prayer. My prayer was not come, uh, angels come and destroy the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the evil regime and uh, you know, miraculously re uh, rescue all these people because great is your reward when you are persecuted. And the prayer at that time would be, God, give them the resolve, give them to the strengthen their faith that love not their life unto death. All right, so that they will be glorified by going through martyrdom. And so here, Revelation 20, 12, uh, 20, uh, 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony. And what? They did not love their lives to the death. And that would be our prayer for those who are facing uh, execution, facing torture, and just to strengthen their faith. That uh, way to prepare ourselves right now where there's peace, that we want to strengthen our faith that when the rubber hits the road, all right, we will love not our life unto death. So I want to trace you back to the Old Testament. The first Christian martyr, a messianic martyr is Stephen, all right, one of the appointed uh, deacons. All right, so here, reading from Acts 7, 54 to 60. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gashed, uh, garnished their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. How wonderful it is. The heaven opens and uh, Stephen saw the heaven open and Yeshua standing up, giving him a standing ovation. Now, the scriptures say when Yeshua returned back to the Father, he sat at the right hand of God, right? So he sat down. But here, Stephen saw Yeshua giving him a standing ovation and waiting to receive his spirit because Amen. he knew or spirits of uh, Stephen is resolved to go up and not fear death, Amen. right? So he, Yeshua knows it. And so he stood up and welcomed Stephen. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voice. Now, these are the evil uh, you know, uh, people. They all rushed at him and dragged him out into the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. I think Saul later became poor. This must be the saddest moment of his life. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So before when we come to this point of death, we have to remember this prayer. Lord, Yeshua, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knee and he cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said that, he fell asleep. There was no mention of him screaming in pain. There was no mention that uh, he was suffering. There was just that he fell asleep. Amen. Wow. I just pray that this will be when we do come to face death. It will be swift. There will be no torture. It will be swift. And we say, Lord, receive my spirit. Amen. So that is the, uh, uh, the third way to uh, overcome uh, to prepare for persecution. And I just want to uh, share with you, uh, only very lately, uh, I received this uh, wonderful uh, uh, video recording of the amazing story of this young woman. She died when she was 45 years old. And her name is Brandy Vognum. She died mysteriously and she paid for her life by speaking out the truth. Will you do the same for the truth? Now take a, a, a screenshot of this. Uh, I don't have time to share this uh, video, uh, but the story of this woman was that she used to work for Merck, uh, the very big pharmaceutical company. And uh, she was trained to market some of the uh, products by this big pharmaceutical company. And then she realized that this, uh, this drug is killing people, all right? And she has, she has no conscience, she, she cannot control her conscience to continue to market these uh, killing drugs. And Merck had made millions and billions of dollars. And eventually, Merck was uh, found guilty uh, and they paid, but they really make so many billions. Uh, so, as a result of that, she left the company and she started 
the army for Yeshua to come and to expose the evil things of the big pharmaceutical companies. All right, and um, he gave a speech uh, sharing in this, uh, in this uh, video. And before she died mysteriously, she posted this on her Facebook. And a few days later, she, just, she died, all right? Uh, so she posted this at the Facebook face, uh, book post just before she died. And uh, this may be too small. Let me read out to you what she says. The post I wished I didn't have to write. And this was uh, done in uh, 2019. Huh? So uh, it was a couple of years back. So my apologies is not recent. Uh, so she wrote this. I wish I didn't have to write this. So she wrote this in 2019, but she died recently, yeah, sorry. Uh, but given certain sudden strategies over the past couple of years, I feel it is absolutely necessary to post these 10 facts and please screenshot this for the record. I never had any thought of taking my own life because she knows that eventually the lie will say that she just committed suicide. Not once ever. Even before I had my son, and she did all this because of her son. When she died, her son was 10 years old. I, ha I have a huge mission in this life. Even when they make it very difficult and scary, I would never take my own life, period. Number three, Bastion, which is the name of her son, means everything to me. I would never leave him, period. I have so custody and he needs me as much as I need him. I would never think of leaving him for a second. Four, I have never been on any antidepressant nor been diagnosed as depressed don't believe it if you ever heard anything like this. Five, I've never taken any daily pharmaceutical drugs and I haven't taken any pharmaceutical in 10 years. And the 10 years ago, it was one pill a day. Nothing over the counter, nothing by prescription. In other words, I'm not on anything that would kill me unexpectedly or suddenly. I never done illegal drug either, not even once. Six, there is no way anyone could get into my house. No robbers, no angry executive, which I don't have, by the way. No fanatical people. My house is like Fort Knox, unless it was someone super professional. It, would, it just wouldn't be possible for anyone without highly specialized uh, special equipment and tactics that remotely taking down my high level security system, which they have done before, unfortunately. But my place is so also highly secure in a hardwired kind of way. So even if the power was cut, most people could still never get in. Seven, if something were to happen to me, it is foul play. And you know exactly who and why, given my work and mission in this life. I'm also not accident prone. I got the highest health rating possible when I went through a battery of medical tests a couple of years ago for my life insurance policy. If something were to happen to me, I have arranged for a close group of my friends to start a GoFundMe to hire a team of special investigators to figure out all the details. I have the team and I pass the information on to them. Oh, and money uh, for PR firm to make in national news. There would be a press release sent to every journalist in this country and more. It would not be swept under the rug and it would be their worst nightmare. Nine, there have been many on this mission or similar ones that have been killed. And it's time this bullshit stop. The darkness cannot win. 10, I will never stop speaking out for those who no longer can, even if from the other side, where I imagine I would be far more powerful. I have a team of angels surrounding me every step of this journey but prayer of protection and love are always appreciated. So here, this is a very courageous woman. She died mysteriously and she was found by a 10-year-old son. And the prognosis was that she died of heart failure. But here, she already positioned herself that if she died prematurely, surely a medical investigation must be made on the nature of her death. So here, when we speak against the truth, 
the big evil organizations will come after you. For those who stand for the truth or who stand for what they believe the truth is, right, they will be persecuted. And henceforth, they deserve our prayer support. So what is the timeline for the martyr? Right, there will be martyrs. All right, and so Revelation 6, 9, and 10, 11 give us a very defined time of the end of the martyrdoms. Let me read to you verse 9 of uh, the opening of the fifth seal. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the soul of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitant of the earth and avenge our blood? Then each one of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brother and sister, were killed just as they had been. So the timeline has been given in Scripture that when the fullness of the number of those who God has purpose to be martyred is fulfilled, then Yeshua will return. All right, so I believe that there will be increasing number of martyrs that will be killed during the Great Tribulation. And uh, when that number, God knows that number is completed, and then Yeshua will return to avenge their death. When will this take place? And uh, further down in Revelation 7 verse 9, he explains it. After this thing, I look, there's John who's saying this, huh? John the Apostle. Behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues. Again, all these four group of people. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white clothes, white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. There's a wonderful worship song on this. So here, this great multitude are those people who are going through the great tribulation. All right, And they are here worshipping God because they are up in heaven. So the tribulation saints are explained here. And then one of the elders answers, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And I say to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation mm -hmm. and wash their robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. So here the explanation towards uh, the question that uh, John was asked. And who are these people, all right, who are robed in, uh, robed in white? And um, they are those who are the great uh, martyrs that just come out of the great tribulation. So the great tribulation, I want to say that again, if I'm not being clear earlier, is the wrath of the dragon. It differentiates from the wrath of God. The wrath of the dragon is focused on the believers. All right, The tribulation that comes, the great tribulation that I mentioned in Matthew 24, is the tribulation against the people of God. And this is known as the great tribulation or the wrath of the dragon. Now, soon after the wrath of the dragon and soon the number of martyrs have been fulfilled, Yeshua will come with the wrath of God. All right, that is the wrath of God. And the wrath of God is not meant for believers because before that, the believers will be caught up. Amen. So to say the church will be raptured at the end of the great tribulation. And you want to talk about whether it's mid-trip, post-trip, pre-trip, this will be the post-trip. Post-trip, but before the wrath. So it's post-tribulation, after the great tribulation, but pre-wrath of God. Amen. So we as the believers will not face the wrath of God, Amen. but we will certainly face persecution because for those who stand for righteousness, the Bible is very clear. You will face persecution, but this persecution comes from the enemies. All right? Amen. And henceforth, there will be great reward. All right, so here in Revelation 24 to 6, he says, I saw thrones. Now, this is John again, the apostle. Uh, I saw thrones and they sat on them. Wow. And judgment was committed to them. And I saw the souls of those who have been beheaded for the witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead or on their hands, and they live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. They're sitting on thrones, rule Amen. and reign. 
but the rest of the dead, all right, those who are dead in, in, in Christ did not live until, un, uh, again, until the thousand years were finished. And this is the first resurrection. So those who are martyred, all right, will come return back, all right, with the saints and there will rule and reign in the new Jerusalem with Yeshua as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. So blessed and holy is he who has a part in this first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be what? They shall be priests of God and of Christ, and they shall reign with him a thousand years. So this is the good news. The good news that uh, Yeshua talked about uh, when you are martyred, when your first persecution, uh, be exceedingly glad and rejoice because great is the reward. And this is the reward. They are coming back to rule and reign with Yeshua in the millennial period of 1,000 years before the other people will be resurrected and live forever and ever. Do you have something to say? No. Okay. And it will continue on to eternity after the millennium. Amen. So that is the glorious hope. Amen. All right. So moving on, uh, the reward for the righteousness, the 77 are decreed. This is for according to Daniel, right? Daniel 9.24. Talk about the, the 70th year. The 77 are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression. That means this uh, 70 years. When the 70 years is over, all right, to finish the transgression, that means the wrath of the dragon, and then put an end to sin because it's going to be a new millennium and then comes new heaven and earth, and to atone for wickedness and to bring in everlasting righteousness. You see, righteousness is mentioned again. To seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy place. And then further down in uh, Daniel 12, 3, those who are wise will shine like brightness of the heaven and those who lead many to righteousness like stars forever and ever. Amen. So henceforth, righteousness is deemed to be so important. And for those of us who teach righteousness and lead people to righteousness Amen. and to teach them to be prepared for persecution, they will be also like stars in the heaven. So I want to declare and to proclaim that we understand this very basic truth that righteousness is key to be in favor with our, to be in favor with God, and there will be great reward despite that you will be persecuted for righteousness' sake. And God is going to raise up all of you, Amen, to declare the righteousness of God, Amen. the kingdom of God, and the second coming of Jesus Christ. And this is a uh, go back. And this is a very important point because in the last day, God is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. All of us are with flesh because we live on earth. Only when we die or we are taken, our flesh will be transformed. Uh, if we are taken at the first Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18 talks about Jesus meet us in the air. That time our present flesh and blood body will be transformed into a body that's incorruptible, just like Jesus after he died and resurrected. He has a glorious body that, that is incorruptible. So we will, at the trumpet call, we will, our body will be transformed into an uh, incorruptible body like Jesus. So do not short change. <laughs> do not short change whatever things that's happened. Uh, whether you'll be persecuted, whether you'll be in prison, whether you'll be killed, do not short change. There is a story that uh, was told by uh, Sadhu. Sadhu is a very uh, uh, godly, righteous person and um, he is very close to the Lord and Yeshua always appeared to him and teach him and some uh, angels also visit him. There was this story that he 
he mentioned in one of his uh, sharing in uh, America, Lancaster. He goes there every year until the COVID came. And then I think now he resumed going back because uh, Lancaster is one of the place of uh, refuge. It, uh, so the Lord told him uh, he, he should go back every year. And before the another prophet from Australia called Neville Johnson was taken to home to be with the Lord, uh, he, Neville always minister with him together. And this story, uh, I will encourage you all to, to go and find out. It, it's about this seven uh, pastor that was uh, taken by the communist regime and they were marched to a lake to, um, and the, the evil regime stripped all the, the pastors and get them to walk in snow and uh, towards a lake and ask them to go into the lake. So it was winter, it's minus. And this, um, this seven pastor uh, was uh, very resolved actually. That's why we said you have to predetermine in your heart that you, you will not deny Jesus until death. So this seven uh, pastor was uh, in the in the water, freezing, but they did not deny Jesus. So officers' eyes was open. They, he actually saw seven angels with the crown, each one holding a crown, ready to be put on the pastor's head when they died. But out of the seven, he was very curious. One of the angels was about to put the crown on the, uh, the last pastor that uh, not died yet. Then he took the crown up again, and then he came down again and up again. So it was wondering why. Then later on, this pastor, after all the six dropped it, he ran out of the water. And actually this officer put seven stacks of clothing in front of the pastor, say, if you deny Jesus, you can get out of the water, you can dress up, you can, uh, there's a fireplace, you can come here and warm yourself up and you can drink a vodka, okay, to warm yourself up. But the number seven, Pastor came out of the water, he put on his clothes. After seeing all the rest of that. Uh, so this, uh, because this um, officer was able to see into the spirit realm, because we live in two realms, it is whether God opened your eyes to see the spiritual realm. So when he saw this uh, last uh, angels that uh, are not able to put the crown, on the last pastor because he came out. So instead of this, because he is an eyewitness of what is happening, he himself jumped out of his chair and he went into the water and he died in the water because at that time he believed this Yeshua is a true God. Amen. And he is the seventh crown instead of for the last pastor became his crown. So it's an amazing story. There are many, many countless stories. So sometimes uh, doctrine is, uh, is good, it's a truth, but some people can receive the, the real life story uh, easier than just pure doctrine. You need doctrine and real life testimony. That is why in Revelation 12, 11, it says they, uh, they overcome Actually, the, the Hebrew Bible and the Chinese Bible say, he who are victorious, not just overcome. Overcome is a lower level than victor. Uh, overcome, that means you, you are being persecuted, you overcome. But more than overcome, you are victorious. 
So some of uh, the version is good that nowadays, uh, even you do not have different version of the physical Bible, you can Google and it's all free. You can have so many versions and then you can read through the different version to get the, the whole meaning. Of course, if you can read Hebrew, that's the best, but unfortunately, uh, we are not conversant in Hebrew. So whatever language that you are conversant with, it's good that uh, you, you compare it with your own language. So the Chinese is called the Shen Zhe, that means the one who won. Okay? So it's a victor, it's not just overcomer. Because uh, some version keep on saying overcomer, it's a lesser degree. If you are vic victor, it's a, it's a higher level. Okay? So we must memorize uh, Revelation 12, 11. You, you are victorious because you, you have the blood of the land. So these are the three powerful weapon or uh, tools that you, you must understand thoroughly because just studying the blood of Jesus is so important. Because of Jesus, we are not only just redeemed from our sin, and then we are called righteous in the eyes of God, but you can go further because that is just the beginning of a pilgrim progress of a believers. And it is a narrow path that we have to walk. And very often people will choose the broad way and the end is destruction. This is why there, there are people who have done the statistic of the present uh, believers of so-called Yeshua. There's things that they just say the sinner's prayer, that's it. They are guarantee a passport instead of green passport, it's an eternal passport to go to heaven. But those people who, uh, who are fearful and uh, go back and just like that last pastor, that's, his salvation is gone unless he repent before he die. So it's a, it's a journey and there is a very good uh, book by John Banyan that talk about the pilgrim progress, how you reach your, the eternal kingdom. So anybody on the journey can drop off. So it's not a one safe, always safe. It's a journey. And it's also growing from infant to mature uh, sons and daughters of God. So Jesus came to be our model. He is the perfect sample of, of God you know, to, uh, in human form. Because before that, he was a spirit with a soul. He, he has an incorruptible body. It's a different body like us. But because he, he created man on earth, so we're given a body, physical body. It's like an earth suit. Like for example, the astronaut that goes to the moon, if they do not put on the astronaut suit, they will die straight away. So, so on, on earth, when he created Adam, he created him out of the dust. And then he breathed into his nostril and then man become a living soul. So it, it, it's a very deep uh, topic, but if you, once you understand it, then you, you will realize it's, our God is just such an awesome God. He's such a wise God. That's why his name, one of his name is called El El Yon. He is the most high God. There are a lot of God, which is a small G, but our God is a capital G O D. And then he, he has so many names and studying the different name of God will give you faith in the God itself. Because in John 17, three talks about knowing God is eternal life. What do you mean by knowing God? Not just know that he's a creator God, not just he's the most high God, but what sort of God? 
He's a faithful God. He's a merciful God. He's a God of love. But, uh, so let's get back to what we want to talk about. And I believe that uh, we're entering the stage where the cycle of the church is coming back its entire fullness. All right. Uh, in Joel 2.25, he says that, uh, you know, that the church actually gone through uh, the dark ages. Uh, when the church was birthed during the days of Acts, it was powerful. It was moved by the Holy Spirit. And then when uh, paganism comes in, you know, Constantine uh, uh, legalized Christianity, it actually went into the dark ages. Right? So now I believe that uh, in uh, Joel 1.4, that uh, no, Joel 2.25, he said that I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. Amen. So I believe that we are entering into that stage where there will be signs and wonders because where there's increased amount of uh, darkness, increased amount of wickedness, there will be greater measures of his power. And we are living in a very uh, exciting era. And so let's rejoice on that. Uh, and then another thing I want to talk about besides uh, the four points that I mentioned on how to uh, prepare for persecution uh, is that... Uh, God is a God that sees, is a God that uh, will protect and provide. You know, only recently, uh, at the beginning of this year, there was this uh, huge uh, volcanic uh, eruption. And the ICJ, uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, PA to uh, Dr. Yugen is uh, Fijian, she's from Fiji. And so she got uh, very uh, uh, immediate news and she basically asked all the directors and all the member nations to pray for the nation of Tonga, Tonga, and also for Fiji. Now, what basically happened was that um, you see in this uh, screen here, there is this great uh, eruption, uh, uh, which is the underwater volcano. And uh, it is so powerful that uh, it sounds as though that it is like, uh, you know, the big explosion of some uh, big, uh, bomb that went off into your nearby area. So uh, this is um, this is the place where the epicenter and it is in the nation of Tonga. Right. Tonga. And uh, here, this is a picture of what it depicts. Now over here, you'll notice that um, this region here is actually the volcano, the cradle of the volcano that is above sea level. And these are the two big islands, right? One island on the left and another island on the uh, right. All right, and this is a big uh, volcano uh, cradle that's above sea level. But when uh, immediately just before the eruption, this cradle actually went beneath the sea level. So it was totally submerged by seawater. And soon after that, it exploded. This is a graphic of it. Uh, the, mega, the, 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 the magma just falls out all the way out and uh, throw out a huge uh, debris, you know, the ashes, all the way up into miles and miles up into the atmosphere. And uh, we would expect that many lives will be lost, but uh, wait for this miracle. We would expect that uh, immediately there will be a great tsunami wave that will come and swipe away the, all the island's inhabitants. Uh. But the tsunami wave that came was only barely 2.7 feet high. So it did not do much uh, damage besides the damage that was done by the eruption. Now, the reason why I believe is that uh, this nation of Tonga is basically very much, uh, uh, most of the population are believers. Christian. And uh, it's amazing, you know, you have uh, the, the, the Wesley Church, the Latter day uh, Saints Church, the Roman Catholic Church, the Free Church of Tonga, uh, right, Assembly of God, Seventh day Adventists, and um, basically uh, almost like 91% of the populations are proclaimed believers of Yeshua. And I believe that this is the protection that God has given them. You know, praise God for the protection. And another thing I want to highlight is that um, in the Old Testament, we have uh, Paul. And uh, Paul was uh, incarcerated uh, by the high priest in prison and uh, was recorded in Acts 5, 17 to 19. 
Uh, then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation. And they laid their hand on the apostle, which is uh, Paul and the rest of the people, and put them in a common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison door and brought them out. Amazing. All right. And, and, and the, the, the security door in the prison was still locked when the soldiers came and retrieved uh, Paul to be questioned by the Sanhedrin. But uh, Paul was not in the prison cell. He was out in the temple <laughs> preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Oh, so this is amazing. All right, in the recent past, uh, we have met Brother Yun uh, several times. He has been to Singapore. Uh, he has come to City Mission Church and share his uh, life story. It was amazing. He is also the author of The Heavenly Man. All right, and uh, in his book, he recorded that uh, he was made a cripple. You know, the prison guard actually beat him so bad that uh, he actually, his bones, his leg bones were all broken. So he could not walk. But the angels came and uh, healed him, and not only healed him, and took him out of the prison. Yeah. And uh, there was uh, someone that, uh, another pastor that was uh, on the way, being uh, entered into the cell. And he, and he, when he was, uh, um, uh, what call it, uh, secured by the guards that show him the, the cell that he's going to, he saw Brother Yun walking out of the cell. And, and he saw him just walking through the, the, the wall and walking through the cell doors, you know, which is still locked, and the guards didn't see him, but he, his eyes was open. We saw that, and uh, he also testified. Yeah, when he reached the outside, the taxi yeah. was waiting for him. And the taxi was waiting for him and also brought him to safety. And now Brother Yun is, uh, you know, doing mm -hmm. great uh, uh, event in Germany, and we pray that Germany uh, will be saved. All right, he's such a powerful person in his testimony. I believe, I remember it was... Uh, the year before COVID, uh, 2019, we were in the Feast of Tabernacle and uh, the guest speaker on that uh, uh, and, and, and Gidi's uh, uh, opening ceremony was none other than uh, Brother Yun. His son was grown up. His son was uh, very fluent in English. His son was the one that uh, Interpret. interpreted for him. Yeah. It was uh, such a great testimony. So here I want to basically say that persecution is coming. But we can also expect great exploit, you know, by the Holy Spirit and a great deliverance by the Spirit of God and the angels will come and surround us and to provide and to protect. And then here, I also believe that uh, uh, Dr. Robert McWary was talking about uh, 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 Goshen, you know, the land that uh, God has uh, basically located the Jewish people during the, uh, the, the template and they were kept safe. Well, and I believe that there will be many caution that will be established as the refuge for the Jewish brethren and for the believers. So now let's go back to scripture in Genesis 45, verse 9 to 11. Now what is caution? Well, it's the place of God's provision. So here verse 9 says, Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus said your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. All right. You shall dwell in the land of caution. So this is what... Uh, Joseph spoke to his uh, brethren to go back and to fetch uh, uh, Israel or Jacob to e Egypt. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near to me, you and your children, your children's children, your flock and your herd, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty, for there is still five years of famine. That's what Joseph says. All right. Uh, I believe that there will be a place of multiplication too in Goshen. So further down in the Genesis 47 verse 27, say, so Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt and the country of Goshen, and they had possessions there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. So here, uh, during last uh, Wednesday uh, global prayer, uh, there was a lady that came and shared. Uh, her name is Christine um, yeah. uh, Dark, yeah, Christian Dark. And she was saying that uh, she was uh, uh, a disciple of Raha Bonke. Uh, and you also know uh, this uh, wonderful pastor in uh, Pakistan, uh, Pastor Anwar Fazil. And uh, he was, she was testifying that uh, many of the M's have come to know the Lord by visitation of the Lord, Lord himself appearing to them. Amen. And uh, she wrote a book. 
uh, called uh, Approaching Petra. And uh, she says that the Lord has opened her eyes to write this book, that uh, Petra will be a place of Goshen for the Jewish people during the end times. Now, many of you who have been with us on the trip, especially during the 2018 trip, um, or 2019, right? We went no, no, to no. Petra. Oh, yeah. We went Nine. to 2019, yeah. We went to Petra. And earlier on, we also went to Petra where uh, Brother Walter was there. And, uh, you know, we see the treasury. And, but behind that, uh, behind the facade of the treasury, there, I believe there's a big haven there. And that's where the Jewish people would dwell in safety uh, before the Romans came and destroyed Jerusalem. So in the future, I believe that uh, there will be established places of refuge for the believers. And uh, there will be places of Goshen. And um, there will be a place where no pestilence will come near your dwelling. All right. So here, only in the land of Goshen, uh, they escaped uh, the various ten plagues. All right, the swamp of flies did not affect Goshen, and uh, you know the hills did not fall into Goshen, but it fell on the Egyptians. All right, and also uh, there will be darkness all over the world, but in Goshen there will be light, just like in the days of uh, the Israelites. All right, so here in Exodus ten, it says, "Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand towards heaven, and that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness that you may even." We felt it's so dark and heavy you can, feel it. That you can actually feel the darkness. Even you close your eyes, even darker than what you close your eyes for. So Moses stretched out his hand towards heaven and there was thick darkness in the land of Egypt for three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But listen to this. All the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. So here, despite Amen. the night plague of darkness, and I believe that darkness is coming very fast, encroaching onto the world. But yet, when we are in Goshen, where we are in the secret dwelling place of the Most High, you know, there will be light. Okay? Amen. And um, we need to also endure until the end because that is where the reward comes. So here, Revelation 12, 11, again, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, and they did not love their life unto death. Now, this is the number four point uh, that I mentioned earlier on how to prepare for the coming persecution, that you love not your life unto death. Because you do not fearful of death, no one can change your mind. All right? Because you're willing to die. You're willing to be a martyr. And your faith will remain strong. So here, in conclusion, in summary, um, how to prepare for persecution. I mentioned four points, but of course, there are many other points that uh, uh, you may gleam over from the word of God. So first of all, I mentioned that fear not, but fear God. Do not fear man. All right. The second point I mentioned is to build up your faith, especially when you're under trial, under tribulation, by speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. It's powerful. I experienced that before uh, in, in, in the time when I was in my career. And I pray in tongues and the fear just left me. So number three is to meditate on God's word. Right? And number four is the most powerful one. If you do not fear death, <laughs> nothing can change your face. Amen? Uh, also remember, uh, at the end of it, there will be great reward through persecution. And the reward of the martyrs is tremendous. Uh, you'll be given crowns of gold. And you will rule and reign. You will sit on the throne and rule and reign with Yeshua during the millennial period. This is better than the 70 virgins waiting for you, all right? <laughs> that they will be, you will rule and reign in uh, you will rule and reign, all right, in heaven, uh, no, on earth. All right, so here, uh, the verse that I want to point out to you is uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 5, verse 8. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. So by the time where the knife hits your neck, or where the guillotine comes, or where the death comes, you know, before the tire, um, uh, the rubber hits the road, your absence from the body will immediately, <coughs> you will be brought out to glory. You will be present with the Lord. All right, so if you enjoy this video, do subscribe by pressing this button below you'll be the first to be informed of any posting that I make. Shalom, goodbye.